going to be reading from the Word of God in Psalm chapter 14. There are many people that wonder why there is so much sin in the world, why there is so much hate in the world, why there's so much racism in the world, why there's so much violence in the world. Over the past couple of months, we've had shootings happen. People getting shot for no reason. Why? But the reason is this, because of the sinful nature of humanity. Humanity is depraved and wicked as it tried to even forsake God, the God that they know exists. But going on to Psalm chapter 14, verse 1 says, The fool says in his heart, there is no God. So the Bible says that those who proclaim that there is no God, the Bible declares that person to be a fool. Continuing onwards, it says, They are corrupt and they do vile deeds. There is no one who does good. This is true concerning the fact that by our nature, we are sinful human beings and we do sin. For even the Bible says, all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. But continuing onwards, verse 2, the Lord looks down from heaven onto the human race to see if there is one who is wise, one who has seeked God, one who seeks God. Verse 3, all have turned away, all alike have become corrupt. There is no one who does good, not even one. The Bible even goes to repeat the same point emphasized in verse 1, where it says that there is not a single person by God's standard who does good in the eyes of God. And that, my friends, is why we need a Savior. That is why we need the Messiah. That is why we need Jesus Christ to repent of our sins and believe on the Messiah who has been sent for the salvation of anyone who believes, not limited to race. Not limited to gender, not limited to political party affiliation, not limited to what car you drive, not limited to how much is in your bank account. It is unlimited in the scope of who can believe. The only limitation is those who believe and those who do not, those who repent and those who do not. You must repent and believe in Christ, for even Jesus says that unless you repent, you will likewise perish. Luke chapter 13, verse 3 and verse 5. Continuing onward in the passage, verse 4. Will, ever, will evildoers never understand? They consume my people, the people being referring to God's. They consume my people as they consume bread. They do not call upon the name of the Lord. So it says, will then the evildoers understand? Will those who go out committing acts of violence unnecessarily in the streets, will they ever understand? Will those who start hating after other people, will they ever understand? Will those who commit all the sins in the world, all the evil doings in the world, will they understand? Verse 5, Then they will be filled with dread, for God is with those who are righteous. And then goes on to say that you sinners Frustrate the plans of the oppressed, but the Lord is his refuge. So God is only with those who are righteous. And in today's world, since we cannot be righteous by our deeds, we can only be made righteous through Jesus Christ. So God is with those who put their faith in Christ. God is with those who put their ultimate standing with Christ. But however, to the evildoers who does not call upon God, to the person who does not repent, and live in wickedness, in sinfulness. The Bible says that they frustrate the plans of God. They frustrate the plans of the oppressed, of the oppressed that have been killed, the oppressed that have been persecuted, the oppressed that have to live through the hell on earth that is provided on here. But it says that the person who is oppressed, the person who is persecuted by the evildoer, the Lord is his refuge, according to verse 6. So, when we live in a world of sin, when we live in a world where we are oppressed, there is only one name in which we seek refuge in. There is only one person who alone can save you in refuge. And my friends, his name is Jesus Christ, who has come as the sinless lamb to save us from our sins. He was crucified on the cross. Verse 7, Oh, that Israel's deliverance would come from Zion. When the Lord restores the fortune of his people, let Jacob rejoice, let Israel be glad. So when we see here that the passage of verse 7 talks about then Israel and how they've been restored. Because remember, Israel has been persecuted for several years. 
over their periods of time, the pagans and the idolaters would try to force them to believe in the things that they affirmed, to affirm the same sinful lifestyles that they would affirm. Back then, this was at a time where they thought that it was okay to put babies on a stone statue and then set the statue on fire so that it burns up and then so forth the baby burns up. They were killing babies back then and we have the same sinful practice today except now we disguise it up and call it abortion. So the practice of those who worship the false god of Moloch are still today practicing the sinful act of killing and murdering innocent babies from the womb. But that's the Bible's depiction of what a sinner is, is that these are people who know God exists. These are people who in their wickedness suppress the truth and they decide not to call upon God. And that's the reason, my friends, why there is so much violence, why there's so much hatred. It's because of the fact that sin exists in the world today. And the Bible says that the wages of sin is death. But however, the gift of eternal life, the gift of eternal life is through Jesus Christ, through His Son, and what He's accomplished already on the cross. So my friends, if you are struggling with any sin that you have, if you have any doubts or any questions, two things. One, feel free to come up and have a discussion and have a dialogue. Always open to answering any questions anyone may have about the Bible. And number two, if you haven't repented of your sins, if you struggle with your sins and know that what you're doing is sin, then it is never too late to put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ. It is never too late to put salvation upon the name of Jesus, to accept Jesus Christ and what He has done on the cross.